Hello guys, welcome back. So I've been on the fence whether or not to film this video or not. Um, you know, I made a video shortly, I mean hours after the hiring event we had in February here in Las Vegas. And uh, in that video, I expressed how sad I was and how torn up I was after so many people didn't get their conditional job offers. I was really torn up. I was really emotional. Um, I had tried to film that video probably four or five times before um, making it through without crying. Uh, next time, I'm going to have much more temperate uh, reactions to the hiring event. Still encouraging, and I'll still feel bad, those people who don't make it through, but I just, I won't be so torn up, uh, which is nice. So, you know, I, I uh, the next day after this event, I was lucky enough to be flying, gee, I don't know where I was flying. <laughs> I was leaving Las Vegas, and there were a couple people on board that had been candidates for the hiring event who did not get their conditional job offers. Um, one of them was a particularly friendly, very charming young man and his mom. Um, uh, they were super, super, super nice. And um, we did have a few minutes to chat before we took off. And after we took off and hit cruising altitude, I had the chance to spend some time talking with them as well. And uh, I was really impressed with this young, uh, young man. I was impressed that he approached me with a smile, with a very positive attitude, even though he had gotten such you know, negative news that he did not get uh, an offer. It's got to be horrible to have gone, he flew cross country practically. It had to be horrible to cross that country, you know, uh, fly that far, spend such a long day at that event, and then to hear no. It's gotta be hard. But he really did approach it the next day with uh, an open mind, and he was super pleasant and optimistic that it would happen for him sometime. So we were talking, and I forget how I started it off, but I said something that I think was a little surprising and a little shocking. And I didn't mean to say it, as is my normal, unless I have notes. I have notes with me here. Um, <laughs> I say strange things often. Uh, but I said, congratulations. You did not get your conditional job offer. Congratulations. That's, that's fantastic. And I think he was a little confused. His mom may have been a little confused. Uh, but I said, you know, are you working? He said, yes. Um, he lived at home with his mom and he was working. And I said, oh, fantastic. Congratulations, you have a fantastic opportunity to save every penny. It's no joke, no lie. When someone says on Facebook, how much money should I save up before I get this job off or you know, apply for a job? And people have all sorts of answers. I would say have enough money for your bills for five or six months, literally. Uh, because you know when you get this conditional job offer, you're going to training. Very few uh, airlines pay for training. And when you're finished training, you're responsible for either an apartment or a crash pad or something. You're going to buy luggage. You're going to have to spend a lot of money and have money to pay your cell phone bill, your credit card bill, car payment, school loans, whatever. So I said, congratulations. You didn't get your conditional job offer, but you have a fantastic opportunity, especially because you live with your mom, to save every dollar to save lots of money. You're going to need it. Uh, and I made some notes here because I, I said congratulations for a couple reasons. Um, I said, oh, congratulations. Uh, you have another opportunity to um, look at the process of the interview itself. He had shared that he did not feel that the interviewer, the people who interviewed him, were either very warm or welcoming or very pleasant really. And, um, and honestly, it's, you know, if I interview people and I, I have interviewed people for, for employment in the past, one of my jobs in Boston at an optometrist office was to hire, uh, to be the interviewer, uh, for, uh, to hire new staff, you know, and we'd have one position open. I would interview 30 people and, um, I would be as pleasant as I possibly could but it was exhausting and it gave each candidate, I, looking back, my demeanor gave each candidate 
the belief possibly that they had the job, which is really a disservice to the person who wants that job. If you walk away from an interview feeling, oh my God, he loved me. He loved me. I'm sure I got the job. And you don't, I'll tell you, it's a crush. You walk out thinking, oh, that didn't work out really well. And you get the news, you didn't get the job. You're not so emotionally upset, <laughs> you know. Um, but I said, congratulations, you didn't get your conditional job offer. Now you have an experience of interviewing with someone who was not very warm, welcoming, or encouraging. You had the opportunity to uh, show some courage in presenting yourself the best you can to people who didn't seem as welcoming as you had hoped. So that is a silver lining. It's a really useful and, and uh, valuable silver lining as well. Now a slight suggestion to get off topic. Interviewing. If you are not comfortable interviewing face to face, if you're just not at ease in front of someone uh, who's asking you pointedly challenging questions and you don't feel comfortable, you don't feel comfortable talking about yourself and selling yourself, take this time between a failed opportunity at getting a conditional job offer for an airline and your next opportunity, take advantage of that time. Go on job interviews, lots of them. Go on Indeed, go on Glassdoor, anything. Go on job interviews. Go, like, spend it, like, do it like it's a hobby. Um, I would not role play. Don't sit there with your mom, your best friend, some coworkers, and role play interviewing. Because when you're answering their questions, you're answering questions with the knowledge that they love you. They want you to succeed. Job interviewers don't love you, and they may not care if you succeed. Uh, they may not care at all, <laughs> because they might have, at first glance, decided that you're not it, and they just went through the interview uh, because they had to. You know what I mean? So take this opportunity to start going on job interviews. And you know, hey, if you find a job that's better paying, that gives you experience with safety or customer service issues, and it pays better, take the darn job, <laughs> you know, earn more money, get a great, a better resume built, you know, get some good solid experience on your resume. So go on job interviews and face the, the, the challenge of looking at an interviewer face to face and um, knowing that while they don't love you or care for you or want you to succeed, you can present yourself with experience as a great candidate. And you might actually succeed in getting a new job. Worst case scenario, you have the experience in facing your fears. Another off topic issue. Before I went to my um, training, before I went to training, I had a month where I was living in around Tampa, all over Tampa. <laughs> uh, that's another story from another video. Um, I was living in Tampa where they have an amusement park called, uh, called Bush Gardens. And I went on roller coasters every day for a month, as often as I could, because their lines like were like crazy. But I think I still have neck problems from how often I went on roller coasters. Now, why did I do that? I was terrified of turbulence. I was terrified. When I flew prior to being a flight attendant, my hands would hurt after a flight. Just take off landing, any turbulence in between. I was gripping the arms of that seat so tightly, I was terrified. I went on these roller coasters because I was terrified of turbulence. I was, I had no courage whatsoever when it came to giving up control of my environment. As a flight attendant, as a passenger, we have zero control over whether or not that aircraft is turbulent, that faces turbulence or not. So I took that whole month to practice doing what terrified me, which is putting myself in zero control environments and, you know, being thrown up in the air sideways, turned upside down, all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, I was terrified and I held on to those harnesses super, super hard with my eyes closed. And then over the course of the next week or two, I started to open my eyes. I'd let go of the harness. And in the end, I would just fly around limp, my arms so relaxed and giggling. I was laughing 
utter joy at being flung around like a doll. Uh, so if you can't face an interview with comfort and confidence, practice going on interviews. Like, again, go on Glassdoor, Indeed, whatever, and go for as many interviews as possible. Make it a habit and a hobby. Personally, I love being interviewed for work. I love face-to-face uh, -face interviews because I just love to talk about myself. <laughs> <laughs> By nature, I'm terribly shy. If this were a room full of people, I probably wouldn't be talking like this. Um, but um, I'm just talking with you and my camera. <laughs> so it's easier. Easier. But, you know, face your fears. Use this experience. Congratulations. You did not get a conditional job offer. But you got fantastic experience facing a face-to-face -face interview where you did not feel perfect. Or, and, or didn't perform perfectly, now you have a chance to go practice so that next time you can succeed, right? All right, so congratulations, you didn't get a job offer, but you did get the great opportunity to network. Now, you met people in line, because I know you listened to my other videos. When you were standing in line for the face-to-face -face interview, you talked to everyone. You didn't just talk to the people next to you. You talked to the people who were next to them. You know, you looked around corners. You were talking to everybody and smiling, right? Um, you had a great chance to meet lots of people. And if you had to sit down, as you would with my hiring events, uh, for a couple hours sometimes waiting to face your face-to-face -face interview, uh, you had a great opportunity to network with those people around you. Now, that networking, if you do get the conditional job offer, means you have those people to support you during training. If you did not get the conditional job offer, congratulations, you did get a network of people who are also trying to get this job. So the person next to you, Sally, she didn't get the job offer either, but she did go to an interview with JetBlue and she got uh, uh, a job offer or a conditional job offer to go to training. So that when she goes to training and you hear, oh gosh, Sally, you got a conditional job offer with JetBlue. What did you do? What was the magic bullet for, for JetBlue? And she'll tell you her experience. Uh, or if some, you know, Bob gets a job with um, American, you've got a network of people who want the job that you want and uh, you're no longer in competition, so use those people as a network. So you didn't get a conditional job offer, but congratulations, you did get a network of people who you can su that support you in your search for a job offer. And you can support in turn because you know one day down the road, uh, they might be your trainer at your new job, <laughs> you know, or you might be their trainer at a future job. So that network goes both ways. Um, all right, the next two points I want to make are kind of um, in regards to um, some reactions I've gotten from people on Facebook um, in that uh, different elements of the interview weren't fair or they weren't perceived as being fair. Well, first off, nothing is fair. Life isn't fair. I hate to be the, the bearer of bad news. But um, one person in particular, and I don't, I, there's no names, I don't remember names. Um, this one young man wrote, um, that the goldfish bowl question he got was really unfair. He hated it. Um, and it really threw him for a loop. Uh, the question was something along the lines of what two things did your mentor say that really stuck with you? Or, um, what ways did your mentor help you? I don't remember the question exactly because I don't think he was in my section. But, uh, you know, he had a mentor who died and the question really threw him for a loop. And um, I don't think he felt that it was a, a good question, that I think he felt it was unfair somehow and that he really didn't answer it very well. And that's what he, why he feels he didn't get the job offer. Um, you know, if, I would encourage you, if you haven't, go watch my video about the Goldfish Bowl and um, the goldfish ball question. And the goldfish ball question is really any question you're given during an interview, not just that goldfish ball question, but any question you're asked to answer, especially in front of a group of people. So go watch that video. 
it is not about how you answer the question. What I find funny about that video is I made that long before I actually participated in the hiring event. And I really think most of my points were prescient. They were really on, on point uh, in that um, the answer, the perfect answer, isn't and doesn't seem to be the goal when it comes to the people on the other side of the table. Um, we're looking for all sorts of things. Did you dress properly as a as a interview? Uh, you know, did you answer the question with enthusiasm, with joy? Did you enjoy yourself? Are you participating in the environment? You know, um, all sorts of things. Go watch that video. Um, the answer isn't always so 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 important, but. If you didn't get a conditional job offer and you feel it was because of the question, congratulations. You didn't get the job offer. What you did get was the experience of answering a question badly in front of a group of people. And you have the opportunity to inventory that experience and look over what did you do right? What did you do wrong? What do you think you did wrong? What did you think you may have improved on next time? Um, all right, so I'm gonna, I didn't write this down or think about it, so this is gonna be kind of off the cuff, as is everything I say, but I'm gonna pretend I got that same question. What did, what are, what are, what did your sponsor say or do to you that uh, Im impacted your life and whatever? So I would say, I'd follow the rules, because you know, they'll say, say your name and your number and your whatever, and blah, blah, blah. So I would do all what they expected me to do, and I would say, um, you know, I have been lucky enough to have had a sponsor or a mentor or someone in my life where many don't. So I'm blessed that I have this person in my life. And these are some things that they said to me that really impacted my life. One of my mentors has said in the past, faith without works is dead. If I have faith and belief in something, but I don't participate in that faith or belief, if I don't take action in my community, nothing is going to change. Nothing will happen. So faith without my work is useless. That's just an example my mentor used to tell me. Uh, so I, he has passed away, unfortunately. What I do have now are the words and wisdom that he passed along to me that I can use in my everyday life, but also down the road, I can, if I'm lucky enough to be able to mentor somebody else, I can bring them those words that he gave to me. Blah, 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 blah. So that's how I might answer a similar question. How did I have that answer at the ready just now? Experience. I have answered a lot of questions I've interviewed a lot. I also have a lot of experience in life. So I was able to just throw that question out, speaking hopefully clearly, I don't know so much, but, and I would show up looking like I wasn't going to the gym. I am going to the gym in a few minutes if I stop talking. Um, so congratulations, you didn't get the job offer because you gave a rotten answer at the goldfish ball question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, congratulations, you got the experience of giving a really rotten answer or whatever at the goldfish bowl question. So now next time you'll have that experience to work on and bring towards your next interview and hopefully either get your job offer or not and use that experience for the next opportunity. You know what I mean? All right. And the last point. Now this really, I'm not sure is appropriate for this video or not, but I'm still going to make it. Smiling. If you watch any YouTube video about this job, they're going to tell you to smile. Smile, smile, smile. Smile until it hurts. Observation. Because um, I was watching and learning that whole hiring event. And I'll tell you, during the goldfish bowl question, we had between 90 and 100 people in that room um, answering goldfish bowl questions. There were probably four or five people. So if you were in that room, and you disagree with me, I'm sorry. I was seeing it from the front of the room, looking at each and every one of you. Four or five of you smiled. Literally, four or five people smiled. Everyone followed directions, except for smiling. Pretty much everybody followed directions. They all did what they were told to do. Get up, say your name, say your number, 
grab the question, read the question. You know, they, everyone follow directions. I would say four or five people showed enthusiasm, smiled. Two people said, hi, you know, I'm, I'm bubbly. They, they talked about how bubbly and enthusiastic they were. Four or five people smiled. Y'all smiled in line when getting your badges. And you were all smiling when you're in the waiting room, waiting for your face-to-face -face interview because you were sitting down, not being watched. We were watching you, <laughs> but you were comfortable. But during that, that uh, goldfish bowl question, almost everyone forgot to smile. Just telling you. So congratulations, you didn't get a conditional job offer. You may have looked miserable. You may have looked uptight. You may have looked terrified. Uh, if you look terrified and miserable or terrified in general and standing in front of a room of people, you're probably not going to get this job. <laughs> Just telling you. So congratulations. You didn't get a job offer because you looked terrified or you didn't smile. What's the silver lining? What's the takeaway? Congratulations. You did get the experience of going through this event, learning. Wow. Looking back, I didn't smile once. Next time... I'm going to Vaseline up my teeth like Miss America, and I'm going to smile until my cheeks hurt. I'm going to smile until their cheeks hurt. Right? Okay. Ta-da! I do stop talking eventually. So, what I would like you guys to do is to um, feel free to like this video. I don't know if this is something you could share. I think this might be shareable. You know, it might be useful. Uh, so, if you're on a Facebook group or something, and you think that... There's a lot of people complaining that they didn't get their conditional job offer or that the hiring event process was unfair, um, all those things. Feel free to share this video. Um, I would like you to make a comment below. Let me know what are other things that you, if you did not get your conditional job offer with my airline or somebody else's, what are some things that you learned during the experience that you can bring towards your next experience? You know what I mean? So make a comment below. Feel free to say something nice. <laughs> and, uh, oh, subscribe. You know, feel free to subscribe. I think right now I've got 427 subscribers, which I think is wacky. Um, just about two months ago, two and a half months ago, I had 77 or 80 some odd numbers. And uh, it's been interesting to watch this group grow and to participate in conversations. Uh, so I would love you to subscribe, share the video, and um, give it a thumbs up if you like. And I will talk to you later. Promise. <laughs> You're doomed. I'm going to keep talking. So uh, have a great day and uh, fly safe. Bye.